In October 2023, one of the two old leaning towers of Bologna was sealed off by the city council, who feared it may collapse. By December, the situation had become critical, and a five meter high barrier was created to contain the debris in case the 12th century tower collapsed. Surely such a thing could never actually happen. When I was a child, I used to collect stamps. There was no Xbox in those days, and had this old Italian stamp, which I didn't really understand, showing the bell tower or campanile of St. Mark's in Venice. It said 1902 and 1912 next to the words as it was and where it was. I'm not sure how well known it is, but the iconic bell tower of Venice is a modern reconstruction which was completed in 1912 after the total collapse 10 years earlier of the original tower, which had origins dating back to the 9th century. The original bell tower appears in many famous paintings of Venice, including by Canaletto. In July 1902, work was being carried out on the loggetta around the base of the tower when it was observed that the tower trembled. By the 12th of July, a large crack had appeared, but structural engineers reported there was no immediate danger. Two days later, the crack had widened and the square was evacuated at half past nine in the morning. The first stone fell at 9.47 and within just six minutes the entire tower had collapsed, leaving literally just a pile of rubble. As the tower collapsed vertically and wasn't connected to other buildings, damage elsewhere was very limited, with the caretaker's cat apparently being the only casualty. It was decided that the tower would be rebuilt as it was. Italy had only been fully united in 1870 and the loss of such an iconic building under the watch of the new Kingdom of Italy was unthinkable. The future King Victor Emmanuel III laid the cornerstone of the new building. Attempts were made to blame the caretaker for installing a basic goods lift and kitchen in the tower, but in the end it was decided that there was collective responsibility for the failure to maintain the tower going back generations. This rather conveniently involved pointing a finger at the bad days before United Italy, when Venice was under the control of the Austrian Empire. Venice without its bell tower looked very different, as shown by photos from the time. The new tower was constructed differently, including the use of reinforced concrete, modern lighter bricks and extended foundations, to ensure that although almost identical externally, it wouldn't collapse again. A passenger lift was also installed. Much of the rubble was dumped in the Venetian lagoon, where it remains to this day. Unfortunately, the combined use of the original and modern foundations has not been a total success, as they have subsided at different rates, resulting in some cracks and a 7cm lean, but we are reassured that protective cables have stabilised the situation. There is relatively little acknowledgement of the collapse and reconstruction today, and I wonder how many of the visitors realise that it's a 20th century building. I've been to the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas, which I really enjoyed, and it makes me smile that the kitsch copy of Venice in the Nevada desert is, in some ways, not as different from what is in St Mark's Square today, as you may think. Something else they have in common is that both bell towers are literally dwarfed by mass tourism, whether in the form of huge hotels or cruise ships. Mercifully, the latter, which tower over the medieval buildings of Venice, have now been banned from the historic centre. So what conclusions should we draw from all this? Firstly, that the unthinkable can happen. Towers may fall, perhaps Venice will sink, it's not impossible. But secondly, and more positively, things can be recreated and rise again, even if they're not quite the same. I hope you enjoyed this short video about the collapsing towers of Italy. If you did, please click like and subscribe, and there'll be another video about something Italian along in the near future.